inspired by the success of cochlear implants, which were created over 40 years ago in Australia to help those living with hearing loss. The bionic eye has the potential to help many people worldwide living with vision loss. And although the idea for the bionic eye was born in Australia, part of the iBionics team is based in Ottawa. So I got to go down to the lab and see one of those core components, the lasers. In the Sun Lab at the University of Ottawa, iBionics Chief Operating Officer Michelle Pigeon works to finesse the photonics technology that will make the bionic diamond eye a reality. Hi guys, how are you doing? Good, yourself? Pretty good. He explains how the technology works. It's fairly simple actually. All we do is like a web camera that replaced uh, the, the photo sensors in your retina because those photo sensors are, uh, are dead. And uh, we use that camera, send a signal to the implant, an implant that is inside the eye via laser beam. The bionic eye will then replicate how a healthy eye converts light into images in the brain. You can see sort of Michelle's, Michelle's shirt and face there. You can this implant is uh, stimulating with uh, the retina with the electrical current. So the photosensor, like the rod and cones that we have in your retina, uh, normally that, that's what they do. They, they send electricity signal to the optical nerve. What we do with, with our implant is uh, replace those with uh, an integrated circuit that injects uh, current into the, uh, to the optical nerve. Even this simple idea poses some challenges. Dr. Stephen Prower is the chief technology officer for iBionics. You need to put some electronics inside the eye, but the eye is actually a very, very uh, nasty environment for electronics. It's wet, it's salty, it's 37 degrees C, and electronics doesn't like that very much. Dr. Prower and his team at the University of Melbourne in Australia are working on this part of the solution. These devices need to last a lifetime. They need to go into the eye and you don't want to do another retinal surgery. You only want to do one surgery once. You want the material to, to be biocompatible, not create any problems with the body. You want it to last a lifetime and you want it to be able to stimulate the, the retina appropriately. The answer? Well, you encounter it every day on all kinds of jewellery. There's only one material we found that can do all those things, and that was diamond. You know, diamonds are forever. It's pure carbon. There's no adverse reaction from the body. Once it's in the body, it will not degrade for the lifetime of the patient. iBionics now makes their own diamond material that is perfectly tailored for this unique application. We learned how to make conducting diamond and insulating diamond. So our device is based around a plate of diamond that has tiny little holes in it that are conducting. And because it's all made of diamond, there's no interface between a diamond, a wire, a ceramic, etc. It's all one piece, so it's completely hermetically sealed. So we solved this problem of, of protecting the, um, the electronics from the body and yet being able for the electronics to talk to the body. It was fate that brought this transcontinental team together. Dr. Prower met Michelle while he was on sabbatical in Ottawa. They are a dynamic duo, but there was still one missing piece to this puzzle. Dr. Flavio Rezende is a retina specialist at the Maison of Rosemont Hospital in Montreal and is the chief medical officer for iBionics. We were one of the, the two uh, centers in Canada who has implanted a, a bionic eye, a, a, another technology. And through that surgery, uh, iBionics reached out to me. Uh, so now we're, we're collaborating. Dr. Rezende is developing the surgical techniques to implant the bionic diamond eye with the hopes of avoiding the complications from existing retinal implants. Other technologies, uh, there's a cable that, that connects the, the outside part of the implant with the inside uh, part of the implant. And this uh, sometimes can create uh, uh, some potential problems. Dr. Rezende is hopeful that the eye bionics diamond eye will offer a solution that meets a growing need. I deal every day with people that can't see well or can't see at all. So we are, we are on, a, on, a, on the path of making untreatable diseases treatable. This hope drives both Michelle and Dr. Prower as they continue to work on bringing this technology to the people who need it most. If we're, we're in something here. For dry MD, dry uh, macular degeneration, there's no, there's no hope, there's no solution available now. And uh, our, our um, binding vision solution is uh, 
a, a solution that will address this, uh, this problem in the future because it will provide enough uh, resolution to the blind person to be able to uh, recognize other person, recognize their loved ones. And that's the big, that's the biggest loss that people have from losing their vision. Wow, it seems so futuristic, but the iBionics team says it'll probably only be about two more years before they implant the first bionic diamond eye into a human living with vision loss. Dave, what was it like to be there? It was really neat, Molly. Just to see the precision that goes into it is really remarkable. And hey, lasers are pretty cool too. Do you think you'd ever get a bionic eye? Well, I have just under 10% vision, so it would have to be a pretty substantial increase on that for me to go through an implant. How about yourself? I don't think so, but you know what they say, never say never.